a warm welcome back to Rasvet for episode 12 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Well, another day is here in Rasvet. It's just gone 8 o'clock in the morning. I've been giving some things some thoughts while my test plots are growing down on field six. As you've already seen, I did another half uh, fertilizing contract over on field five, which paid up very well. And then at night, all that time and effort it took me. And at the time, yes, it did get a little bit, what am I doing? Doing all that grass cutting and wind rowing and collecting and then into the silage clamp and then delivering it backwards and forwards. We did all right out of that. Now, this wheel loader that I got from Farm Club it's okay, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Well, there is, it's not big enough. Um, there's just not enough weight on it. So, we're gonna upgrade. I just got, I went and collected this because I left it over the construction site. The construction site have got a more modern wheel loader and, you know, across Russia, there are lots of companies, businesses which are growing, that are using modern machinery. I'm kind of putting across this thing because I'm in a rural area and it's small machinery and the farmers are, you know, they're just kind of cracking on with what they've done for a long, long time. And I'm talking about trying to introduce a more modern farming method and that kind of thing. There are plenty of farms and plenty of companies across Russia, sorry, Ukraine, who are already embracing it all, who've got big machinery, have got, you know, but anyway, they've got a case wheel loader that they want to sell because they're getting a newer one. It's a fairly old one. So what I'm going to do is sell this. Uh, we'll sell the bucket as well. Oh. No. Oh, I'll have to do it from the menu. That's not a problem. We'll get rid of that too. Um, we're going to walk over. We're going to collect the wheel loader. They want about 90 grand for it. So to be fair, nearly 50 grand of it will be covered by the wheel loader I just sold. So that's absolutely fantastic. We're going to put it on the back of a low loader. I'm just thinking I need to do uh, logging. I need to do some lumber. I'm going to clear some trees around our site. I'm not going out to the actual forest. I'm just going to clear some trees. That's going to go to the lumber mill. That's going to be milled. And then the, the lumber itself is coming back over here to the construction site to begin the construction. When I was over here collecting the wheel loader, they have already started on the next plot and they're digging the foundations everything's moved along a bit foundations are going nicely they're onto the next set down here i did bring some sand they've got some here they've got a little bit over there that they're using for their construction i do have a full load of sand over there ready to deliver however i know i said it didn't matter but the sand price has plummeted i mean like absolutely tanked so they're okay with what they've got here and what we delivered yesterday for the time being if the price rises great so what they have is this the case w20e for sale for about 90 grand so you know what why not i am going to take it back to the store though because i think what we're going to need is a log fork of some description if we're going to do logging i just thought in all honesty the one that we had it was just a bit, a bit too small. I thought once you start getting logs into a grab and that kind of thing. I'm also thinking if we do have to do any more sand work with this. This has got a bit more weight over the back axle. I don't know. It just might work a little bit better. That was my, my thinking on this. So what we'll do is we'll swap it over. We'll get a log fork. I'll leave the bucket up at the uh, store for the time being. Actually, I could leave it on the loader, couldn't I? Hopefully it won't go anywhere. Yeah, we'll try that. That's the only problem with this loader, and I really do like it, but there's no straps, there's no tie-downs. But, that's, again, not too big a problem. Uh, we're going to do that. Let's go. Yeah, we'll swing by field six, have a look at how that's growing. When we get down there, we'll have a bit of a chat about what's happening down there. There seems to be... Um, um, what's the best way of putting it? People having very little faith. Very little faith in me. <laughs> I know I'm new to precision farming. Uh, I'm not an idiot. 
I did say as soon as I started putting stuff in the ground when I said I was going to do soybean I said soybean was a risk because of all the different things people had said about it and I also said that soybean puts his own nitrogen in the ground now I didn't know how that was going to play out the one thing I did get wrong and I'm talking about now rather than moving it down there but the one thing I did get wrong was I didn't get out and check my field info um, to see what it was telling me because I the weird thing was I said that as I was driving down there about soybean it was a risk and you know and then I said I was going to do an extra crop because I had enough space because I was worried that the soybean situation with the nitrogen would be an issue and then in getting caught up in setting up my, my strips I completely forgot that um, well, I completely forgot to check my field info had I done the field info was telling me that the nitrogen was perfect because that's why you do your fertilising after you put your crop in the ground because that determines how much nitrogen needs to go down is how much nitrogen the particular crop produces on its own so that's why I did the extra crop as well had I just done soybean I could totally understand the people telling me that I got it all wrong and needed to plough the whole field up and that kind of stuff um, because realistically the result I get from the soybean is still a result but it does highlight that point that some crops you're not going to need to uh, plus with precision farming I don't need to do two fertilizing states um, there were a few people that mentioned the fact that I hadn't done enough strips because I needed to add in strips for one fertilizing state and two fertilizing states you don't need to I know in all the precision farming bump all the all the text and all the information about it it says you should do like manure or slurry or digestate first then put your seed in the ground then a chemical fertilizer but the, the thing is if you set it on, on automatic and it automatically adjusts your fertilizer as it gets put down it does exactly what it needs to you, you really don't you don't need two fertilizer states you can do two fertilizer states if you want uh, right so I'm gonna sort out a log grab just bear with me a second okay I've gone for the brush and log fork that comes with the Lee Pair 622. I've gone for this because that it has, if I recall correctly, straps, which could come in really handy. Oops, press the wrong button there. It has straps, which is absolutely fantastic. So not only have we got a log fork, we have got straps. Awesome, that's gonna help massively. Plus we've got the bucket, Everything's looking fantastic. So let's drive back down and have a check. I'll see you down there. You don't need to see me drive back down to field six. I've done the drive a few times now. Let's put that on that and hopefully it stays in place. Again. Fingers crossed. Put the big on there. Let's get some logging. I do have a chainsaw. So what I'm going to do is, oh, I don't know, do I just pay for it straight away or should I use it? I can't really use it and then say, oh, I'm going to give it back at you, I'm done with it now. Yeah, we'll pay for it. I'll sort out the money. About, I think it's about 90-ish. Right, so we're here down at field six. The strips are growing very nicely. I put soybean everywhere else as well. I've got my field info on. So yes, yeah, so this is the situation. Obviously, I've got lime there as well. So my strips. The problem I've got is where I did the soybean. The only difference is going to be on the strips that have got lime, which is really not going to help very much at all, because the strip I put down with just the strip and nothing else. pH value is good. Nitrogen is perfect because the soybeans put the nitrogen into the ground. The strip I did lime and that, that should be a better yield. Again, nitrogen is perfect because of the soybean, but that does have the addition of lime, which should have improved the pH value, although it's still pH is still saying good, although I do have some spots that say bad. Anyway, then the strip I did with fertilizer makes no difference a few people did say that it may have over fertilized now but the nitrogen level is still saying perfect 
and then the strip I did lime and fertilizer is going to come out exactly the same as the one with lime because again nitrogen perfect so the soybean yeah I mean the only difference I'm likely to see in yield is the fact that the lime strips should yield a tiny bit better I'm not anticipating they're going to so what's going to be different then is um, the strips we did here with oats because this one here was just oats and that's saying nitrogen okay the one we did with lime that's also saying nitrogen okay the one we did with fertilizer nitrogen perfect and then the end one has got uh, lime and yeah so pH value is perfect nitrogen is perfect so we, sh we should see a difference with the oats obviously not with the soybean um, and then soybean I just did everything else around it because it seemed daft just doing the test plots and leaving the rest of the field so yeah that be we'll see what happens you know it that's all we can do and like I said even though if the soybean result doesn't work how it was initially intended it will still be a result it will still prove to some of the farmers around that if you are short on fertilizer and you do need to rotate your crops you still need to rotate them because of that very reason some crops will take more nitrogen out of the ground some will put nitrogen into the ground some you need to add more that putting a crop in like this means you don't have to put any fertilizer in now obviously this is only with precision farming if you're doing normal farming I say normal in inverted commas base game farming or you're doing with seasons then obviously the fertilizing things still apply your two fertilizer states or three fertilizer states will still apply unless of course you're doing seasons with precision farming in which case yeah that all changes again so anyway that's all looking okay I mean I could have done canola and oats I could have done any two crops I was curious about the soybean as well and that is the, the second part of the test with soybean because the amount of people that said it doesn't yield well it's there's problems with it I think the problems seem to have been a lot of the problems seem to stem around contract work but if you took on contracts some of the fields weren't yielding properly so you couldn't fulfill the contract because you didn't have enough crop but apparently that's all been sorted as well so shouldn't be an issue we're going to drive straight through the yard I have taken the forestry ural with the trailer through to our field I'm going to clear some of the trees in the field and it's going to be some of the ones around here you know bits and bobs around the, the sort of area we have I think we're going to do am I going to get under that I don't think I am I'll go around to the next one I think we'll thin some of the trees out around here through the village as well enough lumber, lumber for maybe a couple of loads maybe a couple of runs I'm going to have to do I think we'll cut down a tree only I'm going to need a measuring stick actually I could have gone that way couldn't I oh, I would have avoided going through the muddy hole the thing as well is the trailers I'm going to swap the trailers out as well and I'm now also either in the market for a plot of land or another harvester potentially the plot of land first I think I don't mind putting in the time to do the harvesting with the harvest we've got and then get another good crop out of it maybe get a bit of money from doing the logging all that kind of stuff and we'll see how we go I don't know it's a few different ideas knocking around so I just think next time we cut this if I can take some of the trees out it'll make life a little bit easier next time we cut this we may have maybe some larger machinery the mowers didn't bother me and the windrowing didn't either actually maybe some mowers that windrow would be quite nice to have wouldn't they well, I'll leave it on there for the time being now these aren't your standard sort of trees but we should be alright let's we'll see how we get on we're going to need to get a stump grinder aren't we that leap air 622 that's knocking around because that does have a few bits and bobs yeah, I'm going to have to take the actual branches off rather than the usual. That's alright. And then we'll do a bit of tidy up, I think.
And again, this is jobs like this. I know for a lot of people they prefer to just like with fir trees and the, and the pine, it's just run up the tree with the chainsaw and away you go. And these aren't your usual, I don't even know what I'm going to get paid for these, but I want to clear the site anyway, as much as I can. And what I'll do is um, we'll get to the bits at the end. That's all going right. I'll get my measuring stick for one of these. I'll lay it down north, south, east, west, and then using the uh, the map trick. Well, it's not really a trick, is it? But we'll uh, we'll do some measuring because I want them to fit this, and this is going to be sixes, isn't it? I could maybe get away with a seven meter and overhang, and the same with that sixes or sevens. I think is what I'm going to go for. What I'll do is I'll cut a six, I'll cut a seven. I suppose what I need to do is get my measuring stick actually and just lay, drive the lorry up next to it and measure it from the actual trailer rather than the other way around. Oh, well, other way around, that's only matter, does it? As you can imagine, have a bit to do. Hmm, it is actually surprising the precision you can get. There we go. Right. So where am I facing at the moment? Let's do that. Is that not quite? Well, no, actually, that's not too bad. It can do have been over that way a little bit more. So we are at 1308. So I want a bit 1300. No, 1301, be a 7 there. Let's try that, shall we? Can I pick it up by hand? I can, I've still got a branch on the end of that. No! Let's lay it next to the lorry. Let's see. Further. Yeah, that overhangs by a little bit at the back. So sevens will be the way to go. And I can. I know it's fiddly, and if I had a Scorpion King or something like that, and I've got enough money I could lease one. But that's not the point at the moment. That's about right. So what I should be able to do now is lift that up, stick that next to the other one. I think this is going to be about the same length anyway. Ooh. Drop that down. Yeah, that's already just under. Can I pick that up as well? No, that's going to need the thing. Okay, that's my measuring stick. I need that to the side, don't lose that. We're also going to need a pile of brush, aren't we? As I'm not pick up. There we go. A burn pile. Out. Kind of. That's assuming I don't lose any through the ground or. There we go. I cut off far more limbs than that. 
least I thought I had. These can all just go in a trailer or something. And I don't want them getting caught up in the mowers. So yeah, this is this bit is a bit fiddly, and I think um, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, actually have something I need to try. I suppose. I don't think the Scorpion Kings or any of those will um, will take these, will they? We'll, we'll put these trees through. Could be wrong. This is going to be quite a lengthy process, isn't it? I'm slightly puzzled because I I know I cut off more branches than that. Anyway, right, let's get the wheel loader off. First log, and I'll do some more. <laughs> the beauty of the tension straps, if I've got a few, I've got a bit of a pile. Those people that don't like doing logging because stuff jiggles around in log forks and that kind of thing, I can just strap like that and just pick it up with the straps. It makes life so much easier. Or just do it the way it's supposed to be done. I can do it either way. It will go thick, thin, thick, thin, swap them round and load this up. Oh yeah, I haven't paid for the loader, have I? Yeah, this is much higher, isn't it? I, the other one, I don't think, it just wouldn't have had the reach. And any that aren't touching up against the plate, I'll just push them, push them on. And if I do sevens on the other one as well, we will be absolutely fine. Awesome! Right, I think I'll clear these ones along the little riverbed here first. Maybe the ones along the fence line. So fence line, the concrete wall over there. See you in a bit. I've got work to do. It's 10.30 and we're looking pretty good. Pretty much all the field is cleared. I've got a pile of odds and ends there. Stumps that need to be ground out. I've done a few down the side here. Thinned this out a little bit as well. And there was a couple of these bigger trees. I did one. I've got a pile of logs here. Left over from that, odds and ends. You can see that one on the top there, the darker one. So we've got the birch trees, and then we've got those, and I've got some odds and ends, the larger branches from there. What I have done now is turn my attention to the um, the pine trees. So what I've started doing now is thinning out the pine trees. Silver birch, that side I'm going to leave. Pine trees I'm going to do, there's a few in the yard area, Now I'm wondering actually with the trailer, the trailer seems a bit shorter, these might be too long for the trailer, I'm thinking. But we'll give it a go regardless. Let's put those just there. So we've got a few pine trees here and these are far, far easier to do. We have got a fir as well. Because these ones are like, well, like the other ones, like the fir and stuff like that. Let's try it down a little bit. I don't have to worry about taking the branches off individually. And on our way through as well, we end up, we have got, on the way out of the yard, there's loads of these. So the next run I think I'm going to do will be all pine. Unless there's a silver birch that's in the way of, of a further process that I might do, 
or something around the yard. Oh, it's not quite all right. There we go. Now my measuring stick might be a little bit too long now. I suppose if I carry on doing it this length, come on. There we go. I've lost me tree. That'll do. Any odds and ends I can trim off and we'll just throw into another trailer. So like I say, as you can see, I'm working my way through. The fur will go, these pines down here. As we get a little bit further out, we come to the edge of our property. And these don't belong to us, I don't think. I don't know if I'll be able to cut this one. Yeah, I don't have access to that. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is use the loader. The loader is working brilliantly. I've got some already there, a couple there. I have been kind of grabbing with the log grab and using the straps, sometimes just using the straps, a combination of it. It works, I like that combination. But yeah, this, this is really nice. Not too expensive either. The money's been paid, as you can see, the money has gone down. We've paid our, I think it came 86 or something we paid in the end, 87. These are going to overhang a little bit off the back. It's a problem because the ones that are on below it are uh, awkward. Because they're kind of rounded. I can maybe get them a little bit closer. There we go. Just flatten it a bit if we can. Yeah, so what will happen is the sawmill will sort these out and then hopefully when the lumber gets delivered to the construction site they can get cracking. Oh, before I forget while I'm doing this, I want to say a huge, 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 huge thank you to um, Mark and Jason. Thank you to both of you for your generosity. Very, very kind of you both. Thank you for supporting the channel. And therefore me, therefore my family. It is much appreciated by all of us, so thank you very much. I have no idea what lumber's paying out. I don't know what we'll get for a full load. I'm intending to do two full loads. I don't want to go too far off that way. The next ones I think I need to go thick to thin, thick to thin a few. Cause, yeah. I want to leave enough gap there that we can still turn all right. I mean, we are pivoting from here, so that shouldn't be too bad. Well, here and here. So we should be okay, as long as I can leave a gap in between. Let's strap that. There we go. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you where we're at. Update wise, Silver Birch is done. That looks so much better now. It's so much clearer over there. Um, and then, yeah, and now we're moving on to pines with a few firs thrown in there as well. I think I have some bits that aren't attached here. What's going on? Hang on. I 
Whoa! Have I, bro have I broken something? That's horrendous! I must have liked that earlier. Ooh. Okay, I need to, to repair that. I'm not sure what's happened there. I just noticed. It's all become a bit discombobulated. Okay. Hmm. You know, I've been thinking while I've been finishing off this last load, I might buy property now. I'm going to get field seven. Problem is, it's got cotton in it. This is next to field six. I thought it'd be perfect for having both next to each other. It's not too expensive. We get a bit of land round it. And field 10's available. That's a bit more expensive. You know, I'm going to go for field 7. We can deal with... Even if I do a contract... Let's buy it. Field 7 is purchased. It belongs to us. Uh, it's going to be ploughing. I don't know what we're looking at with regards to fertilising states or anything at the moment. But that doesn't matter. The good thing about that is... Moving forward, we've now got our new field... If I, even if I have to lease a cotton harvester, I've got some money there. We'll make the money back in the cotton that's on it. We'll clear the field, then we'll do soil, sam soil sampling. So what we can do then is we can get the um, prototype soil sampler from Red October Industrial. If you didn't watch the episode where that was offered, they've, yeah, you'll see what happens when we do it. This is a full, full load. I don't know what we're going to get for this. But the pine trees here, I'm going to clear. Probably that big tree there as well. Clear this area out. I have been doing a bit of weed whacking as I've been going along. I've been using the landscaping tool and removing some of the bushes and weeds as I go across the main field where I've just done. And then I'll probably take out some pine trees all around here. The pine are easier to do than the birch, obviously. And if I just take out the pine trees, it will thin it out a little bit as well. Tide it all up a bit. There's a load more pine down the side of there. There's a load more pine here. We should get enough for a second load. It'll be a bit quicker as well to do... I mean, that first load of all the birch on the lorry, as you can see, they're a bit kind of higgledy-piggledy, as are the, the long... or the the curved branches, sorry, off of the other tree. So, we'll, you know, I'll get a second load in. But I'm glad we bought field, uh, field 7. So yeah, cotton harvest, we'll get that. I'm assuming there'll be a cotton harvester available somewhere. Someone will have one. I think our test plots are ready to harvest as well. That's come around really quick. What time is it? Not even 10 past 11. Right, sawmills this way. We'll see what we get, we get for our first load. I'll load up a second. We'll get that taken. We'll see where we sit financially. I mean, potentially I've got enough for another harvester, haven't I? Depends what harvester I go for. Now, like I said, do we go for a second one like the bison? So a small one. Or do we try and upgrade? It might, might mean going Russian. But maybe a Rossel mash? Maybe. It's an idea. I'm undecided at this time. Now, with this swivel axle rear trailer, hoping... We should be all right for the log point. Um, apologies to Christoph, who had my other Ural off me. Someone did comment to say, in my excitement to, to do the exchange, I didn't do any repair, I didn't wash it, I didn't refill it with fuel or anything like that. I didn't. And I apologise that, Christoph. I can send you some money back towards it, if you wish, to cover the cost of any maintenance and fuel. It's funny, I was thinking about this the other day. On FS17, if ever you did an episode where the thumbnail said forestry, I think I've probably mentioned this before in the videos, if anything said forestry, that always used to get way more views. I don't know why, um, but that all seems to have flipped on its head with FS19. People do seem to be very anti-forestry and logging and that kind of thing. 
it's odd. I don't know why. It, it was always it was it was that strange anomaly I always used to find, you know, forestry episode or you know, if I put the word logging in the title or something like that. It always used to do better, but now, not so much. Actually, I can drive through it, can't I? That's all right. I haven't checked the price of sand to see if it's going up or not. Can I get in there? I think I might have turned just enough. Hang on. I think I've gone over the thing, haven't I? Can I get to it? Potentially. Right, straps on that. Let's undo those. Oh, did all of it. Is that all? 32,000 for all of that? Wow, I thought I was going to get way more than that. Next double load, I'm going to come in so I'm lined up right along that. I'm concerned that I didn't... didn't get what I should have. Mind you, those birch trees probably aren't worth very much. The next one will be a double load of pine. So, potentially. But then again, it's a means to an end. This is part of my deal with Wayland Utani. Um, they give me the land to use which I'm using partially for logging as well I'm supplying lumber to their building better worlds project you know so yes I've been paid for it but it's not necessarily about the payment it's about the lumber that's what I'll tell myself <laughs> I'll keep telling myself that right another full load you think what I'm going to do about this cotton Yeah. That won't be in this episode anyway. But we'll make a tidy bit of money off that. So not only have we bought the field, which we can then use, the fact that's got cotton in it is an absolute bonus. Just grab the trailers. I'm going around collecting up all the logs and odds and ends. The burn piles, they'll go down to the lumberyard. But as you can see, we've cleared this out. Nice and neat. I've got a load of stump grinding to do. I did a couple out here. As, you, as we go around, you'll see it's a lot clearer. I've thinned out the trees through here. And down the hill a little bit. And down there a bit. And we cut down. We, I cut down. Just enough trees. I mean, literally... They're all on. I mean, they're stacked a little bit high here and there. I thought I was going to have a load left over, but it actually worked out all right. So what I'm going to do is with this, with the straps, get some more logs in. They don't always like it too much. Oh, those co coves, those coves, curbs. Those curbs are rather large. Um, so let me get in there. Oops. Okay. Well, they're sort of in. Should have a beacon on, really, shouldn't I? To warn pedestrians, but... Oh. God, this has got really good ground clearance, I must say. I haven't hit many stumps. He says, having just hit a stump, that's what's made me kind of realise... I hadn't actually noticed just how high it was, but see the height of that stump there? And well, we're just on the limit of catching it, but brilliant. Let's get the logs down. This I'll just take down. And like, I'm, I'm not going to get hardly anything from any of this. It's just odds and ends, but it tidies it all up, gets it all out of the way. The one that's on the floor, I think so. I'm not going to need to do any more logging for a little while. There are a few trees around the yard. A few more pine trees this end. Up near the workshop that I want to tidy up. But those I'll do off screen, I think. 
the lumber will still go to the lumber mill or the trees will go to the lumber mill and then all the prepared the prepared lumber will then go to the construction site the same as all the rest of it like I say that will predominantly be done on screen I'm so glad we decided to get this I think this is going to work out really well I think the lift capacity is going to be so much better I don't know I honestly don't know what happened earlier on but we managed to get everything bent back put into shape I, I, it was really very strange I had cylinders and rams and things all over the place okay so so that last one in make sure they're all in properly they won't strap in that's all good Then we'll swap over, take the other one. Hopefully, we'll get more for this load because it's all pine rather than a mix of pine and beech and the other one. We might not, but if we do, happy days. So next episode then, we have got, oh yeah, cotton to sort out. We need to sort out a cotton machine. We've got to clear that field. We need to do new soil samples. So yeah, I need to get on to... Um, Red October Industrial and see if they can sort out that soil sampler for us and we'll get our samples done, our test plots cleared as well so a more precision farming-esque type things in the next episode and then moving on from there hopefully there'll be some more construction to have a look at We've at least expanded with the new field. Oh yeah, harvester. I need to think about what harvester we're going to go for. I suppose having something with a larger capacity would be a good idea. Hmm. That as well, I think, will require some thought. Probably shouldn't be overtaking, especially coming towards the bend. Fully loaded. As we are. And I'm going to come into the cell point at a slightly different angle this time, I think. Oh, that is leaning, isn't it? I can feel that. I can feel the Ural shifting. Okay. It's taken a while, to be fair. What time is it now? Quarter past one. Playing in real time, so... Yeah, it has taken a bit of time. But I don't mind. It's all part of it. I always find logging a bit of a palate cleanser. When I did all of Helmerkra, I mean, I was using bigger machinery then, and we could move up to some bigger machinery. We have, we have, obviously, that's a point as well. We own the land up where the, the sand pit is, and once the sand pits used up we could then sell the land back but there is a lot of forestry up there as well so potentially we could look at maybe getting some forestry machinery to do some more forestry but for the time being the chainsaw worked perfectly okay let's try this again oh, we're going to get them both in so what do we reckon we get more than 30 odd thousand so we got last time didn't we are we in Kind of. Right. Let's go straps off. Let's see, shall we? 44. A little bit more. That'll do nicely. I will see you on the next one. If you've got any ideas with regard to harvester drop it in the comments let us know what you think I'm, I'm thinking probably Russell Mash it just depends which one I've only got 245,000 so not a huge amount of money plus we're going to have to sort out some cotton harvesting gear 
so that's going to eat into our funds a little bit. I mean, if, you got, if you've got any ideas, what, what you reckon we should get for our harvester? Something that fits the area, fits where we're going with this, then please let me know. If you have enjoyed it, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.